our first speaker, and his evaluator is John Green. Would you give us some or objectives? I'm glad to. <coughs> Mr. Toastmaster, guests, and of course, David. David, today you're speaking from the basic manual, project number two, organize your speech. Objective, to select an appropriate outline which allows listeners to easily follow and understand your speech. To make your message clear <coughs> while supporting material directly contributing to that message. To use appropriate transitions when moving from one idea to another and to combine, to create a strong opening and conclusion. Timer, five to seven. Uh, please help me welcome David Schwartz. Why I don't go to psychics anymore. Why I don't go to psychics anymore, David Schwartz. Well, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, I've come to appreciate one of the great things about this group is that we can come here and talk about topics that we probably ever ask us to talk about <laughs> or even want to hear. So today I decided I would talk about why I don't visit psychics anymore. Now, how many of you have ever been to a psychic? An astrologer, palm reader, anything? Once in your life, you you know, fortune teller. You know. Yeah. Well, usually people go to see psychics on a regular basis. They're real popular in some parts of the country. And they want, they have some kind of stress or discomfort in their life, and they want to know when's it going to be over, <laughs> right? So usually we call this ESP, extrasensory perception. Now, if any of us were in a totally dark room with, you know, a dog or cat, it would be totally flat to us. But the dog or cat would be moving around like it's just kind of dim. And you know, we don't question the fact that. A lot of animals have sensory abilities far beyond humans. Dogs, hounds can smell like uh, a million times more sensitive than humans. Most, uh, most animals, their hearing is way more sensitive. They can see infrared, and sometimes ultraviolet, and their eyes are much more sensitive than humans. We don't think they're like psychics. <laughs> it's just, it took a while to figure out that this is just how they're designed. You know? But then some human beings, probably have abilities to interact with the environment on vibrational energies that other people don't. Unfortunately, science can't measure that. So we call them psychics or something like that. Well, I don't really think that's what's going on with psychics. I think people can, can sense vibrational energy, but when it comes to prognosticating the future, I don't, you know, I have to disparage that idea. <laughs> I don't really think that's what's at work here. And here's why. Now, some of you guys, the engineers in the, in the, in the room, you're going to appreciate this. So if we look at the evolution of science. It was kind of a lot of hocus pocus and run by the church until Newton came along and published his Principi Mathematicae, or whatever it was, Principles of Mathematics. And he sort of founded the foundation of physics in the world. And so now we've got this Newtonian model, very mechanical cause and effect model. And that went along. and. People still trying to figure out, well, what is really at the core of things? And Niels Bohr, I think, came along and said, well, everything is comp composed of atoms. Mm -hmm. And atoms are these little things with a nucleus with protons and neutrons and electrons floating around them. Well, how do we know? Well, you shine a light on them. It's kind of like being in a dance hall and you get a strobe light. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, once you throw a bunch of photons in an atom, what you're seeing is the past. You don't know what was going on exactly at the time when you saw that. Well, then this guy Heisenberg came along, and he said something even more profound. He says, you cannot determine the state of a, of a bear if you poke him with a stick. If the bear is sleeping, you can't tell if he's sleeping by poking him with a stick. Because what happens is the bear gets up and gets really angry. You don't know if he was asleep, he was just napping, he was maybe sitting there lying in the way. You know, it basically, what he said was the 
the impact of trying to observe and measure a system affects the state of the system. So in other words, for physicists, everything we observe is old news. Because by the time we see and get some measure, what we're observing is past. Not only that, like the bear, we've disturbed it. It's not in the same state, which poses a problem for physicists. They go, well, how do we know the state of things before we observe them? Well, then this guy Einstein comes along, comes up with this general and special theories of relativity and quantum theory, and even says, Matter is not composed of atoms, but subatomic particles. And to make matters worse, <laughs> um, there are two states matter could be in. Actually, waves or particles. And they can even be in both states at once. And which state it's in, curiously enough, depends on something that scientists can't even control. In fact, they found when you run these experiments, whether double, triple, quadruple blind, the one thing they can't control for is the intentions of people who are aware of the existence of the experiment. Doesn't matter where and when the experiment takes place in terms of time and space, just the fact that there's somebody who's aware of the experiment, their intentions that they hold on the outcome of the experiment will affect it. Well, this really confounds physicists, right? But of course, any self-respecting mystic is going to go, but of course, we've known that for thousands of years. <laughs> you create the future by coming up with an intention and focusing it on an outcome, and that's what shows up. So getting back to the topic of psychics, I don't think they're seeing the future. See, what they're doing is they're planting a seed. See, and then they give you a bucket of water and a shovel and a bag of manure. <laughs> And they tell you to water the seed. And it works. Why? <laughs> because you want to believe. You need to believe. You need to know that these words like <coughs> possibility and probability have no meaning. You want things that are certain. You want to know the future. And there's a future in your future. And if there isn't, you just might as well crawl in a hole and die. <laughs> so, if the psychic doesn't put it there, who does? Well, fellow Toastmasters, my suggestion is we just put the intention out there, plant the seeds ourselves, and declare our future to be whatever we want it to be. Now, the alternative is to take the blue pill. <laughs> <laughs> and then... You know, Mr. Anderson, there is no future in your future until we tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> so just sit back and enjoy the show because you're really not in control of anything anyway. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next speaker. Lee Ruff and his evaluator, <coughs> Steve. <coughs> <coughs>